Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Inshallah, this week we'll be speaking about social media, the positives, the negatives, and inshallah we'll be giving some advice when it comes to a Muslim using different platforms. I'm joined again with Sheikh Ibrahim. Mashallah, marhaban, welcome. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, it's lovely to be back and uh, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant goodness. Amin, amin. Sheikh, when it comes to social media, uh, obviously it's a vast topic, it's a hot topic, it's a topic that's discussed frequently and quite often, even though we've discussed it in the past, people carry on asking, uh, asking for this topic to be discussed. And uh, personally, I think that it's due to a few reasons. One is maybe they've got uh, children or the new parents and they worried about the effects of social media. Another reason I think is because a lot of people, they suffer when it comes to addictions, when it comes to, you know, aimlessly just scrolling. And it happens to, I could say, almost everybody, if not everybody. So maybe we could start off from there. Maybe you could give us a little bit of a a brief overview about social media. I know you, you've you read a lot when it comes to the statistics and uh, some of the studies that have been done when it comes to social media. Yeah, so subhanAllah, this is something that I like talking about because people are so addicted to social media today, yet we don't classify it as a drug. You know, the, what I find as a good cue to first diagnose yourself, you know. <laughs> so literally open your phone, and look watch where your finger goes the next time you open your phone. Is it, you know, the Quran app? Is it, you know, whatever other app? It's usually, it's either Facebook, TikTok, you know, Instagram, whatever app there is out there that you're addicted to, it's, that's where you want to go. And usually it's to see how many likes you've got, how many views you've got, or what people are doing. Uh, you, th This is what I find, that where your finger goes is a sign of whether you're addicted or not. And it happens so often, you know. And obviously, the only way I really realized this was I started watching myself to say, hold on, what do you do when you pick up your phone? What's the first thing that you do? And so many times I go onto my phone to do something else, but you end up actually going onto these uh, platforms, you know, you and you forget what you actually primarily went onto your phone for. So it tells you how addicted you are to social media. So I've tried to curb that. Uh, slowly but surely. It is a process, but it takes time. I'm not saying I'm addicted to the point where I, I can't let it go, uh, but I think it's an easy access to dopamine. And we, a lot of us know what dopamine is. There's discussions that are online and people are talking about it. It's a, quite a hot topic. You know, interestingly, there's uh, a few books when on the topic. There's one guy who wrote a book. It's called Hooked. Mm. Uh, it's a yellow book, as far as I remember. The yellow cover. Yes. And... Uh, in it, it's mentioned that that book, you find it in all the different, uh, the, the top companies, the top social media companies, Facebook, etc. Then the author of that book, eventually, as far as I remember, he wrote a book years later, because in the first book, he's speaking about how to hook people onto uh, mm. this, uh, so, uh, these different apps or social media. Yes. And he, he was, I think he was quite upset or he wanted to uh, speak about how a human can now detach themselves from social media. So he wrote, the next book was Unhooked. Oh, He spoke about uh, actually uh, try, how a person can uh, get off this. What I want to get to is that when it comes to social media, obviously you've got so many different people. You've got millions and billions of dollars uh, being poured into an industry and they looking at how they can keep you there, keep you glued there, keep you addicted mm -hmm. there. Uh, when it comes to the different algorithms, when it comes to the different methods. Like I remember reading on one of the platforms, reading about it, and they mentioned how, uh, you know, when they took out that uh, the the scroll, they made it an infinite scroll. So you just carry on going down, mm. you carry on going mm. down, you carry mm. on going down into a bottomless pit. Yes. And all of a sudden you realize that you've lost an hour or two hours. And you find, as you mentioned, sometimes people, yes, a lot of people are after likes, a lot of people are after comments. A lot of people just, want to pass time. A lot of people mm. just want to escape from, uh, you know, the realities Reality, yes. of life. Yes. And it happens, you know, I find myself, you know, before I used to have, uh, I feel I used to have a lot more uh, discipline. I even had a different opinion when it came to social media. Of late, I've noticed myself that at times I can sit, my favorite app is Twitter. So <laughs> I sit, uh, I read the news, I read this, I read that. And then you start following a topic and it's because it's live, 
you know, the, the thread goes on and this goes on and that goes on. And then afterwards I got to a point where I said, okay, let me log out. Mm. Uh, I don't want to see anything. But then at times there's certain pieces of news that you need from there, yes. who you want from there. So then you get back there again. So I think that, uh, yes, it's a double-edged sword in the sense that it can be used for a lot of good. Obviously, right now, we, a person would listen to this is on social media. Exactly. But there's also a lot of harms. Another important uh, point of differentiation is, are you a consumer when it comes to social mm. media? Are you just there to consume and take in and take in and take in? Or are you there to uh, produce and actually give people that which is of benefit? Yes. You know, one of the things that it's done for many people is that it's reduced the attention span. Because previously you had to, you know, you opened up an app like YouTube, for example, and you had these long, long videos. You still do have them, but uh, people tend to go for what, what are known as shorts, what are known as reels. And, uh, you know, they want to go through these short 15, 20 second clips. The minute it's not interesting, like not even the minute, the second it's not interesting, the first five seconds, Guys have turned, you know, moved on to the next reel. So what it's done is it's brought our attention span right down to about 20 seconds. And then if you only really have to, will you engage with the longer video and content that will actually benefit you and uh, something that you'll remember. Uh, another thing that is good to take note of is, okay, I've gone onto the app, I'm using it, I'm scrolling, I'm going through uh, content and after an hour or half an hour or however long when I've reached the end of my thing, let me scroll backwards and let me see how many reels I've been through. And what did I benefit from these reels? What did I take away? Did I take away something of value? Will I actually implement this in my life? You know, a lot of times I see what they call life hacks, you know, and they say you can do this and wash <laughs> dishes like that and do that and, you know, right? It's... It, it, it's Something that you think, okay, wow, I can implement that. And you never remember those things. When you need them, you literally just or, never remember them. Or you them. try to implement them and it doesn't come out like the video. <laughs> yes, yes. So, so so, really and truly, it's become the uh, pandemic of our, of our time where people are just addicted. And there's this drip of dopamine that you're receiving constantly from this. And it's instant release of dopamine. So... What it's doing essentially is telling you, it's training your mind to believe that I, I, I can get the dopamine here so easily. Why should I go and work on something for an hour, go and, you know, kick a ball outside in the yard or uh, pick, up a, pick, pick up a golf club and, you know, putt a bit or do something like that to achieve that dopamine when I can just pick up my phone and do it, you know. So people become addicted to this. And we're fortunate enough to have seen a time where there wasn't social media. It literally wasn't there or, you know, it was there in a very different form. Uh, but there's children that are born into today's, you know, world where there's social media and that's all they know. They get a phone from the age of like maybe five years old, six years old, and they're onto these apps and they're doing these things and going through these clips, maybe five, six, but early, say seven, eight. So the only thing they've really known is to hardwire their brains to watching 20-second clips. How do you get a guy like that to, to change, you know? How do you get him to say, okay, I've got a task to work on. If I do this and I get to the end of it, I'll actually receive a, a reward internally where I'm proud of the fact that I've achieved this. It's something that's good, that's good you know, I've achieved something good. He, he literally doesn't want to do that at all. I think somebody who may have listened to where we've reached now they yeah. may say that you're only bashing social media. <laughs> you're only speaking about the ills. Yes. And uh, I think we could divide this topic into quite a few things. Right now, what we've spoken about is more consumer-based. Yes. Where somebody is just sitting and consuming and wasting time. And they've mm. got more important things to do in life. Mm. Uh, at times, people lose themselves. At times, people are... People think that the fake world there is actually the real world and the real world is yes. the fake world. So I think to put it into perspective, that's more what we're touching on. Yeah. Uh, with this topic comes uh, a point where you find a lot of Muslim youngsters, uh, as young as six and seven and eight, who say, we want to become YouTubers. We yeah. want to become uh, this and that. Uh, what would you say to those people? And obviously speaking about some of the 
positives that may come out of this, yes. some of the negatives that this may bring about, etc. Yes, I, I like that because there is, it is a double-edged uh, sword, like you said. Uh, definitely, you can benefit from social media as well. You can become a content creator. Uh, perhaps you've become, you know, you get these tra traveling vlogs and people are going around and showing you different countries and they're actually benefiting from that. They're, they're earning from that. Uh, if you are one of those people and you are doing it in a halal manner or you've set up a business online uh, and you're using social media to promote that business, I mean now on uh, certain platforms you've got shops that are you're able to set up. Uh, if you can do that and benefit from it in that manner, that's a positive way of using social media. So uh, definitely they, they, they are two sides to it. Yeah, I think that uh, obviously there's people who are at such a young age, they haven't even been through life, they don't know what's going to happen in so many years if they're still living. And that's why you find that there's a group from amongst them who they decided that, you know what, we're going to go all into YouTube, this is our life, and this is what they wanted to do, whether they had uh, mm -hmm. zero views or so many views. And then you find there's a group who they said, ah, let me just look for the likes. I just want to become famous. I just want to become, uh, I want to make a lot of money. And you find a lot of the times people like that because they, they're chasing a fake trend. They're not living their truth. They're not living for a purpose. Mm. You find that later on in their life, a lot of them, they come out now, either they regret, they feel like they've lost a childhood mm. or their childhood. They feel mm. like there's too much information about them out there. Yes. So I think it's, it's a difficult decision for uh, somebody to make and we've got to acknowledge that when it comes to youngsters today as a whole, it's it's cool to be a YouTuber, it's cool to be famous, it's yes. cool to go out online. And as you mentioned, uh, there's different uh, niches to get into different uh, categories. There's those who want to go into fitness, for example, those who want to go into travel, for example, those who want to go into more the Islamic department. What would you, what advice would you give, firstly, those going into more of a secular type of, uh, or let's say non-Islamic uh, topics, for example, fitness or cooking or whatever it may be, what would you say to them? You know, what I think a person like that could do is to try and give the channel a hint of Islam, you know, add a bit of a flavor from Islam into that, because perhaps you're going into fitness and you want to be modestly dressed when you, you know, you're on camera. You don't want to be uh, in clothing that's deemed un-Islamic, you know. So that can actually be a point of, uh, you know, a strong point for you, a point of da'wah for you. Uh, you have men sometimes, you know, we have sports persons who keep beards and they perform their salah and, you know, th this comes out in their, uh, you know, on their channels and in the, so try and add that Islamic aspect to it and you can actually make it a means of your uh, earning reward as well. So not only are you earning in the dunya but you're earning reward as well. You know a lot of times we have the elders who bash at uh, social media and I think it needs to we need to have a bit of a balance in between where you have a positive aspect and there are people who can actually uh, earn and make a living out of it. So we need to have that balance where we accept them as well, but we have some rules or general guidelines. Because in addition to this, you have people who, like you said, they just post anything and everything. They put themselves, you know, literally sometimes stripping naked or you know, on, on, on camera simply to get a view or two. Why would you do that? You know, it's something that really and truly we know the hadith of Rasulullah that when you have no haya, then uh, do whatever you want. You know, literally meaning that you will do whatever you want because you have no haya. You literally have no shame. So, as Muslims, I think we shouldn't lose our identity in the pursuit of a view, in the pursuit of a like or a share. And something that comes to, to mind is that we're after all these views, but what about the view of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? What about the uh, sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon us? Did we think about that? So, whenever we you know, press that record button or we go onto a live stream, we really need to take into account that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching. So I will use this in a positive manner. Uh, another way to look at it, and a lot of people have said this before, is that if I were to die today, would I be happy with people seeing 
my you know content would i be okay with them going onto my pages uh, because rem remember that that stays on most of the time people don't delete those accounts they just leave them or family members can't delete those accounts so uh, remember that that is what will stay it is part of what they uh, call your legacy so yeah you know interestingly you find that uh, when it comes to people who generally just just chase the dunya and they've got no truth to themselves, no mm. higher objective, higher objective, I'm speaking about more ikhlas, sincerity, mm. doing something for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you find almost every single one of them, they tell you somebody chasing money. They say, you know, when I reached my 1 million or 10 million, they, there, was, there was no substance to it. When I got my dream car, there was no substance to it. Okay, I got it. What's next? When I got... Uh, this that they were wishing for what's next mm. funny enough i was sitting with somebody last week and he was telling me you know uh, he was speaking about his car he said you know this car yeah when when i first uh, was able to afford my car he said yeah it was it was a craze it was something new it was novelty he said but the minute you drive that car home mm. now it's, it's a car he said now mm. i'm thinking of just selling my car and, uh, <laughs> by, and you know downgrading mm. so my my message or my point that i'm trying to get to is that don't be short-sighted when it comes to this. Don't think that, okay, I'm just doing this to become famous. I'm just uh, becoming a fitness YouTuber, for example, so I can get more likes and I can get a lot more money because you may not reach there, but you may reach there and then what? Then mm. you find the people who've got the millions and billions and the mansions and they can't sleep at night. Uh, they're suffering from depression. They have eating disorders, all because they reached that thing and then there was no substance. To it you know speaking about that we we touched on the content creators those who are more uh, leaning towards uh, more non-islamic type of topics and you mentioned a good point where they can have a, a tinge of you know good islamic etiquette mm -hmm. at times you yourself just uh, being a good muslim good upright muslim using clean language unfortunately today it's become the norm mm -hmm. where the worst of language is used mm -hmm. I mean, it's become, again, cool, astaghfirullah, to use the worst of language. And that's apparent when it comes to your uh, social media platform. Yeah. So I think a person should try their best to still stick to their principles. It doesn't mean if everybody else is doing this to get a view, you also just have to do that. You've got Allah to answer uh, to uh, at the end of the day. Yeah, you know, getting views doesn't mean that you have to do all of these things exactly as you're saying it. And... Uh, the truth is that you have channels out there <coughs> that don't do this and they do have the views and they do achieve. And this is what I find is like a ridiculous argument when people say, no, but if we don't do it, we won't get the views. Or if we don't do it, we won't make money. You know, you have businesses that sell alcohol, for example. And Islamically, you're not supposed to sell that. As a Muslim, you know that Islam doesn't allow you to do that. So uh, there are businesses out there that do it without. So why are you insisting that you have to? You don't have to. It's just something that you're allowing yourself to believe that you have to do. So sometimes you may actually go for a while without much response or uh, much of a, a you know viewership, etc. But then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opens simply because uh, you've actually pushed and carried on and said, you know what, I'm going to do things the right way. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opens your doors. Perhaps it may not happen for you because it's not meant to happen. It's for not the good better. for you, for the better. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you something uh, better. But I feel like today everybody wants a response immediately. You know, I've put a video out there, it needs to come, I need to become famous today, you know, not tomorrow or even yesterday, you know, literally. So everyone wants that uh, immediately where we can have uh, a bit of patience, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will open the right doors. The other thing is Islamic content. Yes, that's the second uh, category I wanted to get yes. to. What would you say to somebody who uh, wants to become a da'iyah, wants to become a sheikh? You find there's a lot of youngsters out there. Uh, what would you say to those people? Surely, uh, they should. I personally feel there should be a few more guidelines and a few more things mm -hmm. that somebody's got to understand when it comes to this topic. I think have knowledge about what you're doing first and foremost. You know, you really can't talk about a topic where uh, you don't know what you're talking about. You know, I've seen so many clips and uh, subhanAllah, it, it amazes me how people who really know nothing about something are actually talking about it. How, 
how do you even talk about something that you, you don't know anything about? Uh, they have no experience about. Yes, yes. Literally, they have no knowledge, no experience, nothing. And the guy has come up and he's talking about uh, the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And, you know, you can do this and you can't, can't do that. And this is halal and that's haram. In big, big issues that, you know, mountains of knowledge discussed before. And sometimes where there's a scope or an allowance for a difference of opinion, they just say, no, there's nothing at all. They cut it out altogether. Sometimes where there shouldn't be an allowance for a difference of opinion or it shouldn't be tolerated Islamically that, okay, here you can have a difference. For example, someone can't come and say that. This is obviously an extreme example, but nobody can come and say that Allah is two. You know, you can't come and say something like that. But people are discussing issues similar to this in a and just deciding that, okay, this is the issue and uh, this is what's going to happen, you know, and uh, everything else and everybody else is wrong. Uh, I'm right. But what knowledge do you have? What ha where have you studied? Which institutions did you go to? Then you have individuals who haven't studied at all, haven't been inst uh, to institutions, haven't studied under a sheikh or, or don't have any knowledge at all, are youngsters coming up, have no knowledge at all, and they're taken as ulama. It's nice and it's good to have uh, people who are young and we encourage them and it's okay at, at that level. But then they need to know that from here I should go study, I should learn from a sheikh, I should have some sort of knowledge, you know, uh, path that I follow before I actually go out there. Now, having said that, you have influences as well who speak about the religion. Alhamdulillah, good, speak within, keep to your lane. What you know, what you have... Uh, knowledge of and you show off, it's okay. You want to encourage people to perform salah, you want to encourage them to fast, you want to share some guidance from that you took from a scholar, no problem. There's nothing wrong with that. Good, it's actually encouraged. But stick to your lane. Don't come out and start saying, okay, halal, haram, this is giving fatwa, you know, that that is now not, not yeah, that's dangerous. I think as you mentioned, and to add to those points, uh, firstly, when it comes to the Islamic part of it, Yes, even the people who are not really uh, sheikhs or du'at, you've got that sincerity with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mm. But more so when it comes to a da'iyah, when it comes to a sheikh, what are you out there for? You've got to always renew your intention. You've got mm. to always ask yourself, because we all know the hadith in Sahih Muslim, where the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is speaking about uh, the, first, the, the first people to be thrown and dragged into the fire, to be flung into the fire. And one of them he speaks about or he mentions is uh, a person who was known in the world as uh, an alim, an qari, etc. And he's asked, why did you do that? And then he he's eventually told or he says that I did it. First, he denies. Then he agrees that, you know what, I did it so people could say I was an alim, an qari, etc. And then he'll be told about that, that that was actually your intention. It wasn't for Allah. Then he'll be flung into the fire. Yeah. So it's extremely important to understand and realize what's your intention? What's your purpose for going out there? You may be saying 100% the right thing. Mm. Everybody may benefit. Are you yourself benefiting from mm. that? Are, yeah. are your words going to be benefit or benefit everybody else but be held against you? Yes. So that's, that's uh, point number one. Point number two, as you mentioned, that Stick to your lane. Speak with knowledge. Yes, the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa said, بَلِّغُوا عَنِّي وَلَوْ آيَةً Convey the message of uh, whatever the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa has given, even if it's one verse. Mm. We're talking about things that uh, everybody knows, things which are encouraging a person to do good mm. and generally uh, discouraging them from doing anything that's evil or bad. But when it comes to major fatawa, example, uh, divorce and uh, things like that, a person who's 16 and 17 cannot be speaking about those topics. A person who's 27, 13, regardless of age, mm. if you haven't studied, if that's not your field, uh, don't, don't go into something that you will be held liable. You'll firstly destroy somebody else's life by giving them completely uh, wrong advice. Mm. And number two, you'll be held responsible by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, point number three, when it comes to this group, uh, of uh, we're speaking about the people who are more into da'wah, etc. It's extremely important. And in fact, it's before point number two is to learn good etiquette and good character and conduct. Mm. 
it's extremely important to learn with a scholar who has good character and good conduct. Yeah. Don't uh, come now after you've made five and ten and hundred videos and then you start refuting the whole world and you start throwing everybody off the deen and you start speaking about everybody else. Who's the only Muslim left on earth? You and your followers and then they fight amongst themselves. Yes. So you need to learn other before seeking knowledge, how to talk with somebody who you differ with, how to actually have a conversation, hear their point of view and give your point of view. You know, and that brings me to an interesting uh, story, an interesting thing that happened to me. It's not to do with social media, but it's to do with the fact where somebody doesn't understand another person's perspective. In the Medina University, uh, there was a time where one of the lessons would finish just before Dhuhr. For those who know, the faculty of Sharia is next to the main masjid. So I would go there for Dhuhr when uh, the time was short. Mm. So you go there, you perform your dhuhr. One day a guy came up to me, a guy who's always in the first line, a guy who uh, has, who does activities in the masjid. And he told, he looked at me, he told me, Salam alaikum, Sheikh, how are you? I said, I'm fine. He said, uh, are you a doctor? I said, no. He said, are you in a magister, masters? Uh, I wasn't in masters, I was still in uh, kulliya. I said, no. Anyway, he tells me that, uh, you know, I want to ask you one question. I said, ask. I said, why don't you like the sunnah? I said, I thought I, thought I heard wrong. So I mm. said, what do you mean? He said, why don't you like the sunnah? I said, what are you talking about? Mm. Explain to me. He said, you know, when we come to the masjid here, all of us, when we're performing salah, we all put our feet together. We make them touch like this. But you're the only one who doesn't do that. And then he added, and the hadith is in Bukhari. I told him, brother, did you read Sahih al-Bukhari? Did you read the Sharh of Bukhari? Did you read what all the other scholars had to say when it came to this point? Mm. And then what I told him at, uh, at that point, I told him, why don't you go and read and look into the mas'ala and next time you tell me what you found. I saw him about a month later uh, in one of the restaurants. So I, I went quickly to him. Assalamu alaikum, how are you, Sheikh? Mm -hmm. Did you look at that mas'ala? He said, no, I never. I said, yeah, I looked at it. And this one said this, this one said this, this one said this. And you going with a fringe opinion, not even 1% of the ummah says, I'm not saying it's wrong. I'm saying that the other 99.9% .9 of the ummah don't even believe that you have to put the feet together mm. in salah. How can you now say that this person doesn't like the sunnah? Mm. So same when it comes to social media. In fact, it's even worse. You haven't lived with somebody. You don't know their circumstance. Uh, you don't know under what circumstance they may have said something. They may have genuinely made a mistake mm. and they would correct their mistake and you all of a sudden go not understanding any of this and you know, you just throw them off the dean. You do more harm to them than you would do to any of the enemies, <laughs> uh, any of your own enemies or the enemies of Islam. Yes. So I think it's uh, an extremely important point to remember and carry on drilling in that it's not about uh, becoming somebody famous, uh, being able to uh, stand on the pulpit and mm. just, uh, you know, command everybody. It's, 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 it's a responsibility that you'll be asked about. Yes, you know, uh, what you mentioned first about being sincere and being uh, straightforward. You know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we should bear him in mind at all times. And we know this. And something that is of interest that I found is that if you do it in public and you you know you speak out to people and you speak to people and you're uh, someone who's got the platform uh, then try and have a private life with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if you can do that then now you're making tasdeeq literally of what you do in public with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone so now the two are matching now you know you're kind of getting them gathering them together whereas if you just have a public life where people see you and that's it and you only uh, out only perform in public then you really have to start questioning yourself and saying why do I find it so difficult to do uh, my you know to have a life with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala out of the public eye is it because my intentions are not sincere and another thing is to remember that the people don't see your heart but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does so when you stand up you know something that my, my father always tells me that you know the first person that this message is, is for is yourself you've got to tell yourself that this is for me and 
when you do that, then you, it naturally, naturally becomes a lot, uh, you know, more sincere. We hope that it becomes more sincere and for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if you try and keep that uh, relationship going despite being in the public eye, you know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows, then that's something that really benefits a person. You know, we find people on the other extreme, and there's a lot that I've seen, a lot of people who are talented, especially when it comes to uh, du'at, they have knowledge, etc. Mm -hmm. And you tell them, you know what, why don't you teach online? Why don't you start a channel? And they say that uh, either I'm not good enough, I'm scared of riya, etc. What would you say to that group of people? Wallahi, I like that you brought that up because there are a lot of people that I've actually seen who have talent and then I tell them and they say the same thing, you know, uh, you know I'm scared of uh, showing the people or doing it for uh, being a show or I feel like I'm not worthy of the platform. Well, you know, the news is that nobody feels that they're worthy of the platform. Everybody feels that I'm a sinner. How can I be going in front of people? But if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has accorded you that uh, understanding and that opportunity to go and speak to the people and benefit them, then remember that in that lies your salvation as well. So if you bear that in mind, it becomes easier for you to do it and you're encouraged to do it. And I remember there was a sheikh that was speaking about this some years back in it was said to him that, or he was saying that, you know, you shouldn't be too <coughs> difficult when it comes to youngsters. Let them go out there and speak when it comes to the intention. Yes, reaffirm that it's important for you to have a good intention, but leave it at that. Let them come out there and blossom and grow. And then as they grow, you become more intense in reminding them that, look, this is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, and I think that that's where sometimes uh, when we overstress this part, then it becomes impossible to live as well. Where you, you just don't want to come out in public, you don't want to say something. Yet everybody, everybody has their shortcomings, but you try and seek forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, try and constantly uh, turn back to Him when you, uh, when you make a mistake. And then uh, when you've got opportunities like these and you've got talent that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you, then go ahead and stand up and speak. You know, there's another topic I want to touch on. A lot of people in our field, they may be doing it, but they don't really touch on the topic. And that's, you know, when it comes to, let's say you're posting a video or uh, you're writing something. Obviously, uh, there's a way to write it. There's a way, let's say a person's intention and all that, inshallah, is in order. Yes. Okay. I want to get to the point where there's those who say, I'll just put out my message and uh, however it is. Whoever watches or whoever listens, they listen and whoever doesn't, they won't. That's one group. And the second group will say, okay, inshallah my intention is okay, but uh, I want to look at the different things that will actually enhance and help my message. And that may include uh, looking at the titles of their videos, looking at the thumbnails of their videos, looking at how uh, their videos could reach a, a higher audience, looking at how... Uh, how overall certain tactics may actually help. What would you say to both these groups of people? Wallahi. What's your opinion on it? Yes, subhanAllah. I understand both, to be honest with you, because there are some people who are just naturally of the type that want to do everything to perfection. And this is something that's encouraged in the sunnah. We know, in Allah katab al-ihsana ala kulli shay. Allah uh, decreed uh, perfection upon everything. So you try and be perfect in whatever you do. Uh, so definitely you should try and perfect that. But I also understand the group who just, you know, they, this is not the sole thing that they do. So they just go and they make the effort. What I would say is definitely uh, the first group is better because they do their best and they leave it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then the second group is also ala khair and also doing goodness because they've got other things to attend to so they you know they post and bismillah it's okay whatever we get we get alhamdulillah whatever we don't it's it's okay so uh, definitely I think you can have a balance between the two as well where you, you do your best to the best of your ability and then leave it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you, you know, speaking about uh, this topic, obviously there's a lot of different uh, angles and different pockets we're trying to touch on. Uh, what would you say for, or what would you say to somebody who, they've grown up, they have children, the children are still very young and it happens. And at times you find there's people, unfortunately, who end up using their children for them to gain fame or to gain wealth. The child is of an age where 
they don't really understand anything. Yeah, it's, it's different. There's some people who don't share any pictures about their family or videos, some who share a few. But then there's some who, uh, I'm not accusing anybody, but people mention it later on, people who've done it. Mm. They say we, they made this child grow up in the spotlight when the child had no choice at all. Mm. And mm. They, they were exposed to a certain lifestyle that the child themselves actually regret or they wish they had. And so what advice would you have for people who use uh, children or people who are helpless, etc.? I think children should be a red line. Literally, we should leave them to be, let them grow up in their natural environments. And it's very selfish for a parent uh, to use their child to gain fame and then, uh, you know, or monetary gain or whatever it is. And then later on, that child perhaps didn't want that of their life to be out there or it's negatively impacted them because now the only thing they really know to do is to how to behave on camera or they've become, uh, they've grown an affinity to doing that and they don't like that part of themselves. So like you said, you know, part of being uh, good towards your children is letting them have the choice at the right age. Doing it when they're young and making the choice for them is not actually the right thing to do because it's something that can have serious negative uh, consequences for that child later on. Uh, so I think it would be, honestly, as much as we do enjoy some of the videos that come out there because they're children and they're innocent and nobody doesn't enjoy that type of innocence, you know, seeing, or most people do enjoy that type of innocence. But having said that, it's just in the moment. That's what will happen in 10 years time when that child is much older now. Will they be okay with you having done that? And that's something that a parent should think of as well because it can spoil their relationship with their child as well. Uh, that child may have a serious problem with you having done that and have some serious issues that developed as a result. So that now, Speaking about that, just to go back to the previous point you had mentioned 10 years later, and I mm. wanted to go to the point where uh, you know, at times there's people who, especially those who speak about everybody else, what happens 10 years later when that person died or when you died and that, mm. is that the only piece of knowledge you, you left behind? That I spoke about this person who lived from uh, 1993 to 2030 and mm. finished. Is that, that, is that the piece of knowledge you contributed to the yeah. rest of the ummah yeah. who are coming after you? And, and that's why uh, when you stick to more, they say, evergreen content, when you stick to Islamic Islamic content, we could say yeah. in this term is evergreen. It's always yeah. applicable. Yeah. Uh, inshallah, your message uh, will always be heard, will always be understood. And then getting back to the point we were speaking about when it comes to children, yes, there's some people who use their children completely. You might you may find the odd few, like uh, I know of people two or three where uh, the child actually needs help and the only way they can do it. Sometimes the child may be sickly. Yeah. They have to yeah. they, they ask, they appeal. And sometimes uh, the child may not be sickly, but you find people who've had five children at once, six children at once. Uh, they can't maintain the costs. They can't buy things for the child. It's for all the five or six children. And you find the only way, because it's something so rare, uh, they open a travel blog, a blog or a family blog and a family thing. So uh, as you mentioned that, I think, well, I'm sure that you, what you're mentioning is generally it's a red line, stay away from it, don't use your child. Everybody's agreeing, don't use the child. Mm. But at times, they, yes, they, they, yes. there may be a certain exceptions to yes. the rule. Yes, absolutely. Like if you have uh, times where you share certain things, it's okay. But when you make your child the focus of your channel, that, that's what we mean. Like as they're growing up, then that may become a problem for you. You know, we've, we've touched on people who uh, generally want to become influencers or want to become uh, social media personalities. We get to another category or another group of people who, who've actually started making videos. They've started writing online. Uh, what would you say to those who are in the beginning stages, those who have like uh, three subscribers, nobody reads their blog, nobody watches their videos, but they feel they've got a good message, maybe they want to give up. What, what's your message to them? Keep going. Keep going, you know, that's it. Uh, keep trying. And obviously there's a point at which you should give up. And I think you should know that as well. Uh, so anything that you do in life, you've got to know that I've got to keep trying, keep going at it, but I'm going to reach a point where I know now that I should call this quits because it's not actually bearing me fruit. Uh, but 
initially with social media, especially now with social media and doing something on there, uh, because it's developed for, for so long now and it's been here for so long now, it's becoming increasingly harder to get an audience, you know, and especially when it's content that's just good, you know, and uh, straightforward. It's not something that's eye-catching or, you know, something that's uh, completely absurd that that we know generally actually does garner attention because it does anyways in general life if you had to walk out in the street and do that people would you know be interested in what you're doing so because social media has been here for so long it's become harder so don't give up so quickly push give it a bit of time and perhaps change a few things tweak certain things and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will open the doors yes and I, I think uh, I agree with that point that you know let's say a person a person knows they want to try it out, it's not working for them. But put your, uh, put your effort into it, learn about the different platforms you want to get into, learn about the different tactics, etc. Mm -hmm. that you want to use. And uh, for those who have a, a good, solid message when it comes to, for example, ayat or tilawa, recitation, etc. Uh, yes, my personal opinion is that a person should persevere and carry on, even if you're only getting a few people, those few people you could be changing their lives, unless there may be something even better you can do that mm -hmm. may be away from mm -hmm. social media. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. The, the next category above that is those who've been in it for a while. And uh, they've posted for a while, they've made a lot of videos, they may have a, a, a following to a certain extent, a good number of following, etc. Uh, you find those people at times, they go through uh, dips, they go through different changes, there's different types of comments and hate that may affect a person. A person feels burnt out completely, a person feels that they have to produce and, and give something to the audience. What's your advice to people on this level? Once you've actually established yourself and you're going at something and it's doing well for you, you know, we all get affected by the words of haters or the words of people that, you know, are being spiteful. But in reality, we should actually just remember why we're doing it in the first place. I'm doing this for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I've come here and put myself out there despite perhaps sometimes not even wanting to do something like this or not, it not being in your nature. I'm doing this for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, but what they say doesn't matter. You know, uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was told, وَلَقَدْ نَعْلَمُ أَنَّكَ يَضِيقُ صَدِرُكَ بِمَا يَقُولُونَ And we know that your chest is constrained by that which they say. فَسَبِّحْ بِحَمْدِ رَبِّكَ uh, فَسَبِّحْ بِحَمْدِ رَبِّكَ وَكُمْ مِنَ السَّاجِدِينَ uh, So glorify with the praises of your Lord and uh, be from those who prostrate. So this is something that you can actually use. And worship your Lord until death comes to you. So we can actually use this as a tool to get rid of some of that ham or that uh, you know worry that we have. That, oh, the, these people are saying such and such about me. So let it go. Remember, renew your intention. Remember why you're doing it. It's for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So carry on. Let them, you know, ignore them. And many a times the best way to do something, uh, to, to, to respond to someone is to just ignore them because they are, are useless. For example, recently I posted something and someone said, you know, uh, don't act like you don't want to be such and such a person and uh, you're just make, making believe and you're acting like you uh, this and soon you will be exposed and they said things like that. And I just said, you know, I was about to respond and someone said to me, why are you responding? <laughs> this is someone that's, uh, you know, insignificant. Don't, don't turn to them, just ignore them. So sometimes it's best to just do that. And yes, we are hurt at times. It does uh, stir up emotions and that's the whole point it's to get you involved so that they can actually come into the into the light and uh, be seen you know they, they can actually be seen by others many a times it's people who can't garner attention by themselves so what they do is they attack others to get uh, some sort of attention we see it all the time you know big political figures big uh, influential figures being attacked simply so that the small little uh, whoever you know pip squeak comes out into the into the limelight so truly and really and truly those people are just after the limelight you remind yourself why you're doing it and forget about them uh, that's obviously with that but then uh, there is the aspect of dwindling etc when you when you yourself become uh, you know you you get tired or you burn out or something like that 
You know, speaking about the verse you had mentioned and speaking about how a person should have ibadah in secret between him and Allah, I think a person, you could derive it from this verse because as you mentioned that the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was sad at what the people were saying. Obviously means he was calling the people, he was in public, he was uh, giving his message in public and they were attacking him. And Allah is saying, فَسَبِّحْ بِحَمْدِ رَبِّكَ وَكُمْ مِنَ السَّاجِدِينَ Allah is telling him to do an act of worship which is between him and Allah. So from that verse, I feel like we can derive where a person, especially those who go out into the public sphere to give out good messages, make sure uh, you your ibadah and your acts of worship between you and Allah are in order. And if not, they are more than what you're doing in public. You know, one point we didn't touch on is uh, when somebody feels burnout and they feel the pressure to, let's say you've been posting uh, for so long, you've been posting for uh, years and then all of a sudden you just feel like, you know, I'm burnt out, I want to rest. And there's those who, who carry on pushing, who carry on pushing. We, we hear a lot of uh, influences and these people go through uh, mental issues, things that break the family completely. What would you say there? Is it okay for somebody to just say, you know, uh, I'm disappearing for three months, I'm disappearing for six months, I, I don't want to... I don't want to do this anymore. Maybe I'll think about it later on. Obviously, I think each case needs to be judged by the individual. They know their circumstance best because sometimes me saying that, no, you shouldn't do that would mean that that person would have a complete and total mental breakdown. Uh, sometimes that means that the person may uh, suffer a divorce, sometimes, you know, or go through a divorce, or something may happen. There may be consequences to those actions. So each person needs to judge their own circumstance. But generally, by and large, you don't want to be off social media for a long time, uh, especially being in the public eye, because once that happens, we know that you're audience actually gets less, the algorithm works such that they want you to engage with this app regularly. So now uh, that you're not posting, it becomes a problem. Perhaps what you can do to keep your audience in, 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 in touch or in touch with your audience is uh, to make enough content for that time and then put out stuff, you know, on automation. You know, it just goes out automatically. And we know scholars who have been actually actually been jailed, you know, at times, and the content just goes out there simply because uh, they know that I'm going to go to jail, I might as well make as much as I can, and stuff will just keep being released. So uh, sometimes that's actually good. A personal question that yeah. uh, I myself struggle with is how do you stay consistent when it comes to this? How do you get yourself to post every day or to write every day? Personally, I can disappear for two or three or five or six <laughs> yes. months or the whole year. Uh, how do you maintain that consistency? Honestly speaking, I, I started out with just posts on Facebook and I was uh, like, I became a bit more known for these posts by just posting, you know, a quick message every day. And that's what I've tried to carry through uh, throughout. So whatever happens, regardless of what it is, you won't find like more than two days where I won't post. I'll try and make sure that I post. And to keep it small is the is the trick, I think. So perhaps you're coming back from the masjid, or you're coming and you just make a quick, uh, you know, quick message and send it out there, put it out there. Something that's substandard at times is actually better than posting nothing at all when it comes to social media, because you want to keep your followers engaged. When we say followers, you know, obviously they're followers, but not to say that they're followers of our lifestyle. Yeah, they're defined as followers. Yes, defined as followers. So you're. So it's good to keep your followers engaged and to, you know, keep them, you know, keep something going uh, out there. So just basically being consistent with something small, even if it's small, don't like uh, maybe sometimes I used to find what was a hindrance was, OK, maybe you're not dressed in the manner that people you are used to seeing you dressed in. So should I actually take my garb out and put my scarf on and, you know, put my thobe on? So now what I do is I just I've got a cap on, I've got a T-shirt on. It's OK. You know, sometimes it's okay for people to humanize you as well and say he's also a human being he also has a life uh so it's okay to put out a video like that yeah so you know, we, we've actually taken quite a lot of time yes. but there's still one more point i want to touch on and that's the point of uh haya on social media you know it's unfortunate and uh, sorry to put it bluntly you find uh, a sister posts a picture she could be in full niqab and you find all the guys in the comments down there with all sorts of things, whatever goes on the, in the DMs, who knows. 
uh, you find at times the guys put up a picture or video or whatever, and you find uh, the women all after this person. And I think it's it's got to a stage where uh, we've become desensitized to it, or mm. a, a large chunk of people have become desensitized to it. I mean, you get you can get strange and weird comments at the time, comments that a person, even if they're the worst of the worst, if they had to see you in real life, they wouldn't say such things. Yes. So what do you have to say when it comes to this point? You know, many times people justify that by saying, la haya afiddin. There's no, there's no uh, haya in deen. And in reality, that statement is completely wrong. <laughs> haya is a huge part of Islam and a huge part of your iman and belief. In Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we find that uh, Uthman radiallahu anhu was known to be a bashful person. And this was recommended or commended by uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So, Haya is one of the main principles in Islam. And when you find people not only posting stuff, it hurts to actually see, uh, you know, not only posting a picture or a video, but sometimes just in their comments, stuff that they say, you can see that this person has no shame at all whatsoever. Look at what they're saying. That's not the behavior of a mu'min, of a believer in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You should constantly be questioning yourself. And remember that, a person can actually uh, be thrown into the fire with regards to what they say. Just something small, they say. And the hadith of, it was Mu'adh, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken, that he said, وَهَلْ يَكُبُّ النَّاسَ عَلَى وُجُوهِمْ فِي النَّارِ عَلَى وُجُوهِمْ إِلَّا حَصَائِدُ أَلْسِنَتِهِمْ What their uh, tongues harvest. You know, they literally say something and they don't care. لا يُلْقِي بِهَا بَالْ He doesn't think that, oh, this is something serious. But it is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So realize with, you know, fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with your tongue. And fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when it comes to your face and your body. You know that as a Muslim and as a mu'minah, you're not supposed to be doing that. You're not supposed to show certain parts of your body. You're not supposed to do uh, certain things on camera. Or you're, you're not supposed, supposed to, to be commenting on certain commenting, things. At times yes, you find people yes. who are fully covered. And yes, you still find yes. that. And at times people don't realize... Uh, you may be flirting with somebody's wife, somebody's sister, somebody's husband, somebody's yes. anybody. And would would that person actually like for that to come to their own family? Mm. And I think mm. that obviously the answer would be no. Also, uh, you find uh, how many houses have been broken due to this. Mm. And uh, a lot of the times you find that uh, it may not start off as haram. People start off... Uh, Sheikh, I got a question. Sheikh, I'm suffering from this problem. Yes. Sheikh, they'll make like the whole world has, you know, sitting on top of them. Mm. And uh, that's another piece of advice is that, especially those who are young, the youngsters, myself included, that you don't have to respond to everybody. Mm. And you, there's certain people who are only looking for attention and certain people only looking to get you to take step one so they can get you to step 10. So I think it's it's extremely important to be careful about that. Absolutely, absolutely. Especially being in that position, you find people messaging you all the time. It's important to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and remember that He knows what's going on. So do it if you're going to do it. Do it if you're going to help them, help them for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There should be absolutely no other reason to that. Uh, yes, barakallahu wa I wa feekum. I think we've spoken about a lot and... Uh, it comes to my mind one more thing. At times a person may make a mistake on social media, a mistake publicly. I think it's it's only befitting, it's only fair, it's only right for the person, no matter how many followers you have, to admit to that mistake, to own that mistake, mm -hmm. to apologize if you need to apologize. Is nothing wrong in that. In fact, you find a person's rank increases when they humble themselves for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they correct their mistake. Those few words, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us goodness and barakah. Make us from those who use social media in a way that pleases him. Ameen. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.